You are such a genuine gem. Thank you for clicking on my video. I'm Brooke McKenna, but today's case is the baffling case of Evelyn Louise Davis. Now, the possible suspect in this case is convicted in another case, and then a letter which pretty much spells out the truth, and yet this case is still unsolved. By the way, I post so much content like this. It is my passion to tell these stories. And if you would like to support me, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe and watch these videos. It would mean the absolute world. Now let's get back to the story. So it was 1979 in Ohio, and the Davis family lived in East Liverpool. Now, Lou and Lester had two girls named Evelyn and Rachel, and these two sisters had such a great close relationship that every kind of parent wants their children to have, and Evelyn's middle name was actually Louise, which she went by, but Rachel said that Louise was such a great sister and would often bring home stuffed animals that she had bought for her and Rachel just said that Louise was just a protective second mother to her that she could always count on. You see Louise was 16 at the time born on July 26, 1962 and she was pretty outgoing yet always super sweet. She loved anything to do with her friends and family and animals and she especially loved to ride horseback. She did have a rebellious side. She had run away Way once before and she had also gotten pregnant previously and was pregnant currently. Her first baby unfortunately went to heaven not long after birth but she was at this point four months along in her second pregnancy. But for everyone around Louise they said she was extremely easy to get along with which is why what would happen next would be so heartbreaking for them all. It was June 21st of 1979 and Louise and her mother Lou were going to go out and sunbathe that day. It was a super nice day and they wanted to kind of have some girls time together, some mother-daughter bonding time. So they decided to go out back in their backyard and just get a little bit of sun. However, at 2 p.m. they would have a visitor. Now, this was a male named Robert Wooten, and he was Louise's friend's Darla's husband. And he came over to tell Louise that her friend Darla was home. She had been on a trip and been away for quite a while, and she wanted to see Louise like immediately as soon as she had gotten home. So Robert came over to pick Louise up, and Louise was super, super excited. She told her mother, you know, I'm going to go. I'm so excited, basically like apologizing because they were having kind of a bonding time, but she really wanted to go see Darla. So she changed into regular clothes. That was a white V-neck t-shirt. that was also had a little bit of yellow in it with white trim and horizontal stripes, blue jeans with red marks on the back and clogs. At this point, Louise headed out with Robert, and this is where different sources kind of say different things. Some say that at this point, Louise told her mother, I'll be back by 10, and other sources say Louise's mother told her to be back by 10. However, in either case, she wasn't. And because she had run away previously, her family didn't right off the bat call the police or fear anything, and she was a pretty independent young girl, and it would only be the longer she would be missing that they would kind of fear for her safety as well as her unborn child's. It was the next day and her family had yet to call the police. They believed that she was probably just falling asleep on a couch somewhere and would be home that day and that there was really nothing to worry about yet. However, Louise's father and her sister Rachel went out on some errands that day that they needed to run when they ran into Robert Wooten and he was not with Louise and they went up to him and they said, hey, have you seen Louise? She didn't come home last night and hasn't come home yet today. Have you seen her today? What happened last night? And we're just kind of asking him some questions. And at this point, what he would say would be so incredibly shocking to them. He would tell them that she had run away and that they didn't need to wait for her to come back. 
He said she was not going to return and at this point her father and her sister became extremely anxious. Their anxiety shot through the roof and they immediately contacted the Liverpool Township Police Department to get a search out for Louise and unfortunately they began searching everywhere they could think and yet no sign of her was found. The investigator started with the theory that all teen missing persons cases start with and that is the runaway theory but at this point they kind kind of had reason to because she had already previously run away. However, they quickly found that Louise had left a whole bunch of stuff at home. She had left her makeup, her toothbrush, her purse, and around $300 to $500, all still at the family home. She had also just purchased a gravestone for her firstborn child, and it had not yet arrived. Missing persons posters were then put up of Louise, stating that she was a Caucasian female with brown hair and brown eyes, four months pregnant at the time, due that November or December. December, and she also had a scar on her lower lip and a birthmark on her right wrist that turns red when she's nervous. And at the time of her disappearance, she was 5'2", 110 pounds, and 16 years old. Of course, this is when investigators started looking into the last person to who was thought to have seen her that day, and that was Robert Wooten. Now, they began to question him, and he told investigators the same story he had told her family, but he also added some things, and he said that Louise was already planning to run away, and he told her that he could help. Now, he then dropped her off that day on Pennsylvania Avenue at a stop and go, which was across the street from a bus station. The last time he would see her was getting into a truck with a man named Frank Grimm and then he didn't know what happened next. Of course, this Frank Grimm was looked for and nobody in the community knew anybody by that name or anywhere close to that name whatsoever and so that really led nowhere. And then a woman named Debbie Taylor was brought in for questioning who was thought to be Louise's friend. But strangely enough, at first, Debbie said that she didn't even know Louise, that she was not her friend, had no idea what this was all about. But then a few days later, she did say that she was friends with Louise, but she didn't know what happened. And Debbie Taylor was also found to be the sister of Robert Wooten's wife. Darla. This led to three strange individuals being involved in this investigation and yet investigators had nothing to go on because a crime had not even been found yet so there was nothing to convict anybody of. And unfortunately this is when another case would come along and take the spotlight away from Evelyn Louise Davis because three people had just been murdered. Debbie Taylor was found deceased on June 25th with her two children, five-year-old Jesse and three-year-old Billy Joe. This was the day after Debbie had been questioned about Louise's disappearance, and the person to find the bodies and call it in was Robert Wooten himself. Now, these three had been beaten inside of their apartment, but there was no sign of forced entry, as though someone had been let in. Five days later, the man we all already know committed these murders finally confessed. And at this time, at his trial, Robert was convicted and sentenced to three life sentences at the Belmont Correctional Institute. And of course, this led many to believe that now not only did Robert kill Evelyn Louise, but he was more than capable of it. And yet, still no one did anything about it. Not until they had to. Not until so much evidence was pushed into their faces that they had no other choice but to do something. Because a year later in July 1980, a letter was sent to the county prosecutor and it said, I am writing you concerning Louise Davis. I know where you can find her or should say her body. I can also prove that Robert Wooten did it. First of all, let me give you some proof that I do know what I'm telling you. If you would go to the Wooten house in East End and go into the cellar and go to the far corner of the house under their new kitchen, I believe, and in the very corner there is a space between the floor and the wall, and in that space you will find the clothes Louise was wearing the day she was last seen. And all you have to do is take these clothes to Louise's house and see if her family recognizes them. 
I'm sure that they will. After you do that, and you know for sure that the clothes were the ones she was wearing when she disappeared, then maybe you will know that I'm telling you the truth. Buried with the body is a reddish-brown purse with fairly long carrying straps. If you want to know the location of the body, then you have to do as I say. Bring Wooten back to the county jail. Three days after you bring him back, you will either have the location of the body or the body itself. What I want is a chance to kill Wooten. Another thing to prove I am real is that I tried to get in to see Wooten when he was at the East Liverpool jail, but I would not give my name to a tall, blonde-haired guy, so he would not let me see him. I think that I have told you enough for you to know I am telling the truth, so do as I say, and you will get the body and the proof you need to convict Wooten, if he lives that long. Just so you know how I know all this, at one time me and Wooten were pretty good friends and then he had to go and kill Debbie and her kids if he did kill them. He was convicted, so I have to believe that he did it. So, you know, I have to do something about it. Debbie is not alive, so why should Wooten be alive? Is this what you people call law? I don't want to hear anything about this until after you bring Wooten back, because if I do hear anything, then won't do anything, and you will never find the body, period. Glad to be of service, a friend. The investigators immediately headed to Robert Wooten's home at the 1700 block of Alpha Street and found that this friend was not lying. In between two boards in the basement, wedged in there was a brown bag filled with clothes and this was a tank top, a bikini top, and blue jeans. And on these blue jeans, on the back was a red design. These clothes were then taken to Louise's family who confirmed that they were in fact hers. And the rest of the house was searched as well as canines who were brought in who led them on a trail up a hill through the woods. However, nobody was ever found. A month later, Robert Wooten was interrogated once again in Louise's case and said he had nothing to do with it. And after that interrogation, he refused to have any more. But he is still in prison for the other three murders and has been refused parole several different times. Now, Louise's case is still unsolved, so if you do have any information, please contact the East Liverpool Police Department at 330-385-5564. Four. Louise would be 57 today, and this is an age-progressed photo of what she may look like. Now, Mysterious WV here on YouTube did a segment on Evelyn Louise's case, and they came up with a wonderful fact that's not really talked about much, and that is the fact that Louise was pregnant at the time, and today this child would be 39 years old if it had been born. And if Louise is still out there somewhere, Possibly her child is and knows what happened to her or where her or where their mother has been this entire time and this could really lead to answers in this case. So if you were born in 1979 between November and December and are about 39 today and your mother possibly may look like Louise, please contact the number that I just told you about because it really could make a difference in this case and maybe you don't even know that your mother is missing. But I do want to say that this YouTube channel, Mysterious WV, I just recently found it and it is so brilliant and it's not a collaboration with them. I just found them and wanted to tell you guys about them because it's so incredibly interesting and I know some documentary style can be extremely boring. However, I was completely immersed in the video the entire time. Now, according to a manuscript by Glenn H. Waite, Louise's sister and their cousin actually met with a psychic named Sylvia Brown to get a reading to see if they could find where Louise was. And Sylvia had said that she saw that Louise was in a wooded area up on a hill covered in railroad ties. And however, we do know that these canines had went up a hill into a wooded area and that's when they kind of lost the scent. 
However, Sylvia said that Louise was there, so could they have searched harder and possibly found Louise? And you could say, okay, Sylvia found that out from the case files and she didn't really know that on her own. However, there was something about Louise that was not released to the public until Sylvia said so, and that was that she had a slight lisp. Nobody else knew this, but Sylvia did. Apparently Louise's sister and cousin then went up to this hill and began to search and they did find railroad ties over a hole on the hillside. However, when they contacted the police, they refused to excavate it and they sent officers who didn't really find anything, so they just kind of dropped it. Louise's mother passed in 1990 and her father in 1999. However, her sister still really fights for this case and justice for her sister and just wants to know where her sister's body is and who the killer really was. But do you think Robert really did kill Louise? Do you think that he possibly wrote this note or who do you think wrote the note? I mean, he was so open about the fact that he had killed Debbie and her two children that you would think that he would just come forward with the fact that he killed Louise too. However, maybe if he wrote this note, that was his way of telling investigators without saying it himself and they just never really did anything with it. Maybe this was someone who really did, just did know Robert and wanted to get the information out there, but I just, it bothers me so much that they found her clothing in his basement and still did nothing. I mean, possibly this note was written by someone that Debbie Taylor told about this entire thing before she was killed. Maybe she was afraid that Robert was going to kill her, as he did, and told somebody all of this information to make sure somebody knew. I was talking to my brilliant mother about this case, actually, and she brought up an interesting theory. What if Robert was the father of Louise's baby? Now, I could not find anywhere who the father of her first baby was or this baby, and nobody really ever talked about questioning a father, so there could possibly be a chance that he was, and maybe he wanted to keep her quiet about that and didn't want Darla to know, and also, I don't know if Darla was ever even questioned or if she was even home from her trip like Robert had said. Could this have been his ultimate motive? I don't know, but this case is baffling and one of the most baffling I've ever researched and Oh, I'm sorry to put this on you because I know now that you are just going to want answers just as much as I do, but that is unfortunately what it's like talking about unsolved cases and I just wanted to tell this story so it is known and hopefully a body or a killer can be found. Hopefully both. But don't ever forget to speak up. Your voice is powerful enough and I love you to absolute pieces. Okay, bye.